a TPI update video on the uh, 88 Corvette here. So I've gone, we've done a lot of things to it, starting with all the uh, air injection stuff. Of course, on this, you can see now how this works. This is where the air pump used to be, and that's where the supercharger hooks up. Uh, it has a uh, port primary uh, before going into the throttle body. So supercharger is making boost uh, as it's running the throttle blades are closed. So some of the boost goes into there, which goes into the air injection system. And that's kind of the bypass. And it also, when the valve opens, it'll dump out of this too, which is an, an, another port. Uh, that's where the uh, pickup used to be. So, so most of the time you'd want to clean that up on one of these cars if you're, you're hot rodding it. But on this particular application, we kind of keep it on there. Makes it look a little bit more original, even though it's now serving a somewhat different purpose. Um, so the plenum, uh, top plenum is on now. You've seen it with the, uh, the runners on there that were just loose. So I have it all sandwiched together and somewhat torque tied it up. And it takes a lot to tighten all these. When you do these big tube runners, you have to get down in, down in here with uh, a six millimeter, because uh, we use hex on these now instead of the, the uh, T45, I believe there are torques on the top. So the top bolts are stock. And one of the things I do remember now is there's one on a Corvette, there's four bolts, and there's one that's a little longer than the other ones. And uh, it may go in any point, but it's, it goes to the front one. So both sides a little bit longer when it goes to the front one. And of course, on the other side, you have the one that holds your throttle cable, which is this one, and it goes in the center. So the longer ones go up here, the uh, throttle cable goes on just you know the driver's side in the center, and then the, uh, the two shorter ones go here and here. So, uh, and that's, you know, that's what that piece is there for. Of the throttle which is not hooked up yet now on your stock runners you can kind of mess with them with all of the, the wiring harness and stuff in place but these big ones you cannot so that's why i've left the one valve cover off this side it's really hard to do the other one i went ahead and put the other one on because uh, uh but i cannot put the wiring harness in place this valve cover on the supercharged car is really easy when the supercharger is off to get on so i just left it off for now the other side is not with all that air injection stuff on there so uh, go through, and of course, each one of these lower runners on a stock one or these big porter have, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six bolts on the lower side. And the sixth bolt, the last one, is going to be in the back side, which is the crazy, crazy hard one. Let me get a light and show that. So we go to that back one. See the front one. The back one is the first one on the front is back in there. You can see, oh, where that hex head bolt is in there. That's the front runner bolt on the passenger side. And you have to get through it by the water neck right here, all the way in there with a long socket. And it's very difficult. That's usually a Torx on your uh, stock runners. These have been changed to hex because of the big runners. And on the Driver side, it's right here, front of the distributor, way down in there. You can kind of see just the tip of that hex bolt in there, and you get to it from coming over. Let me go to the other side. Coming in from back, back here, you might be able to see it better in here now. Let's see where we're at. barely even see that thing out of there. It's right behind that black wire. And you have to shove a six millimeter, uh, uh, like a quarter drive uh, flex head uh, swivel socket back in there to get it. And it's a lot of work. And of course on this side, you just have the straight through. And there's a, with the valve cover on, that's a kind of a, it looks easy from this, Advantage, but you have to have kind of some special tools to get at that angle. And this is the hard one up here. That one is really difficult. And the trick to that is before you ever tighten that up, is make sure you do not have these bolts in for the uh, fuel lines up front. So you have that, you won't get to it. 
and so you leave those out. In fact, when I put those back, I leave the lower one. I just, I just put one in there. It's just, there's, those things are a pain in the ass to, to deal with when you have to tear it down again. So that's kind of that. Uh, we got a new belt. This is not the belt that you use on your car. This is a belt for the supercharger. It's a special length one. And the Paxton supercharger sits right there on that bracket. And there's the Paxton supercharger sitting over there. So all the stuff and that'll go on in. And it looks really cool when that, that's on there. And so, yeah, this will be a, a nice, nice, clean setup when done. Uh, what else? You've seen the fuel stuff already in one of the other videos. And this piece here, I know it's really kind of stupid looking. If you, do, if you put your air pump back on your car, <laughs> if you don't get that in there ahead of time, it's real hard to put in there and it, and it bolts right here. And then it goes to the passenger side and to the driver's side. And then it hooks up to your, your, you know, your air valves and your manifolds right there, which I have that off. You can see this side, it's already hooked up right there. And the trick is leave the water neck off because it has to come in from kind of the top and then go down to leave the water neck off before you do that. But remember to put the water neck on before you put the top plenum on because it's a real pain in the butt to do if you don't. So, uh, and then there are a couple things that hook up underneath the plenum that you need to make sure you get hooked up. One is the, uh, the um, manifold air temperature sensor, which is right there, that uh, goldish looking part poning down. It has a plug on it. It's possible to get that on, the plug on there after the fact but man it's difficult and of course your egr if you're using that needs the vacuum hooked up which goes over to the driver's side which is back here with all of this mess here and that's actually not a hard part because it bolts on the the water neck right there and so if you remember that whole assembly it kind of it's self-explanatory after you get it back together and then it has these tubes here and I'll show you where those go later. In fact, it just goes right there. That's, that one hooks to there. So not a hard deal there. Uh, fuel pressure regulator, uh, 85 to 88, uh, actually 85 to 89. Anything that's not speed density without the uh, uh, map sensor over here will hook. This hooks here and there's another line that hooks from here to the fuel pressure regulator. Uh, kind of gets all that together. Now this car has a bunch of other garbage that goes to it, which is all supercharger stuff here. So um, that I have to snake through here and put on there and then kind of get all that together after the fact. But yeah, this is gonna come together nice once I'm able to get these back in place. And they're gonna be a little difficult to get in between those manifolds, but it's possible. I mean, the the, the uh, big runners, but it's possible. It'll it'll work. And uh, because these are cast, I'm really scared to tighten them up. So I've seen them crack before. I've seen people break the ears off of them. So I I torque them in stages. I just do a little bit. Uh, I can't even tell you the numbers I put on it because I'm doing it by hand, and I get a feel for all of them and then let it sit for a while and then come back and, and, and do all the lower six bolts and then the upper four bolts or on each side. So lower six bolts on each side, so it's 12 bolts total on the bottom and then uh, eight bolts to, on the top. And uh, factory has a, a spec, I think maybe it's 15, you know, uh, maybe even 12 foot pounds, I can't remember the number. But on these, it's kind of, I don't even go that high because like I said, the, the factory runners are really, uh, they'll bend. You know, you can just beat the, the tar out of them. You can see dents in them all the time. These won't. These are, these are rigid, and once they uh, decide they're going to give, they'll snap. Ah, and then that's it. Then you're, then you're into uh, aluminum welding and machining. So I'm being very careful with those. Like I said, this, these big tube runners are pretty. They're neat but they are not easy. There's nothing easy about this at all. Factory is half the time. In fact, if, if you follow this sequence of videos, I've said before I had this car, a different configuration, and I had a different brand of big tube runners on here before. I just got so tired 
of fighting with them all the time. When I had to work on this car, I put the stock runners back on, and when I did that, I literally, you know, just, I wouldn't say I killed the performance, but I, 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 I limited it a lot. And so, but I, t I tamed the motor down a little bit at that time. This time it's over the top. So, you know, we're, we're running a, a, a lot of compression, mild boost, uh, big injectors, uh, FMU control for the injectors, uh, a lot of airflow. Uh, we're still on the stock throttle body. I'm gonna I'm gonna run that for a while, and I may play with that a little bit later. But with that supercharger, and I said they're they're really only about a thousand CFM max, 900 to a thousand, uh, and so you cannot you have to make your motor run in a uh, basically in a in, in a mid range more than anything else, low to mid range with these these Paxton superchargers, and they run pretty good that way. It's not a big, big horsepower number car, but it's a big, big torque number car. And uh, it, it, the balance is, is pretty nice when you get them right. Um, but that's it. And you know, uh, just looking into other uh, alternatives, you know, I'm sure if you're watching these, you've heard of the, the, the Mini Ram, which was made for a while. And that's basically like an LT1 type intake with a distributor hole in it. And that is really a neat and clean setup. And man, if you can go with that, that's that's a beautiful setup. But I'll tell you, it does not quite perform the way this does. <laughs> it, uh, it'll it give you bigger horsepower numbers and more RPMs, but it takes away the bottom end quite a bit. And for me, on that supercharger, putting everything up on the top is, a, is not a good idea because the supercharger is limited in its CFM. I said, I'm doing this more for nostalgic vintage kind of thing, even though it's still gonna be pretty high performance, but there are definitely better ways to go. And uh, uh, there always is, you know, hell, you put a freaking electric motor and some batteries in this thing, it's just, you can beat it these days. But this is kind of the pinnacle of tune port, keeping it uh, somewhat stock, somewhat in a factory configuration and just over the top with everything else and this thing will run and it has run like i said this is a this car has been you know it's a, always been a a mid to high 12 second car on the street and it, it's 200 mile an hour car and it'll it'll run and uh it may even do better than that now so curious to see when it's all done and i'll make a video of a all oh, the last part because we're kind of getting getting close to the button up of there here all of the the really, really, really difficult parts of this is done. And so uh, if I've done all my work right, don't have any vacuum leaks from all this crazy uh, uh, big runner stuff, don't have any uh, internal uh, engine issues from the machine work, which uh, you know we had done by a, a real, real good guy, then we should be all right. So uh, stay tuned.